Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. So I just finished this video here doing this and I started to uh, prep for this next set of pages and in instead of me going through and putting everything back into the workbook and everything to show you all the different mats, because again, I think the matting is kind of self-explanatory, you know, the mats that are for the pages that we've used. And if you're following along, then you have those same pages. Um, and if you have the printable template, then you also have those pages. But I have a playlist for this album. It's called The Magical Winter. Is that what I called it? Magical Winter. Um, Simply Magical album. And I've got a playlist for it, so I'll, I'll link that playlist up here in the cards and down below in the description box. And it'll take you step by step. So if you happen to miss a video or if you get out of order, you can always go back to that playlist and find what video you left off on, left off on, <laughs> so that you can then uh, catch back up. So I've been prepping for this next set of pages, and I guess I can turn it, turn that page. <laughs> I've been prepping for the next set of pages, and I just decided to go ahead and turn the camera on. Let's just. Um, it doesn't have to look perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have to have everything out, everything back in its place or whatever. I just figured let's just go with the flow. I've done one half and we're going to do the other half together. So this is the page setup that we are going to be doing. So this is the first fin and this is the second fin. So this is the first fin of the album. And then we're going to be starting uh, on the second fin. So these two are actually mirrored pages. So they are the same. So I'm going to treat them. I'm going to do the same thing on this side as I did on this side. So I'll just show you really quickly. I have added a printable to my collections list. So in my collections list, I have it linked down below. It's also the first pinned comment. And there will be a link down there. It will tell you... Um, It'll, it'll be a link to my Etsy shop, but it's a, it's a collections list of everything that I'm using printable-wise in this album. So I did add uh, the random uh, embellishments, and I'll have it linked in there. And it's just a collection of different random things, and this is one of them. So it actually looks more like this. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like an old-school binder kind of color, kind of feel. It looks like it's textured, but it's not. Um, so we're going to be adding this as an insert. So we're going to make this into like a little notebook. So we're going to be doing that. So I added the random embellishments. There's tags in there. There's large um, large tags. There's large labels. There's, uh, there's jumbo things in there. It's just, I don't know. It's a really cool, you should check it out. It's a really cool set of embellishments. So we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, so we've got that as an insert for the back pocket. Then we've got the envelope here, which I did a wax seal right there. But I haven't done an insert for here yet. I don't know exactly what I want, but this envelope is from the enhancement pack. So four by six photos fit in there. So you could just literally leave it empty and just stuff it full of four by six photos. Um, I'll just use my, my one here that I've got sitting. You just can fill it full of photos and, and that's it. You don't need any kind of inserts if, if you so choose. So we got that. And then on this side, we have a, this is from the Photomats Essentials 2. This is like the Polaroid. So it's a double sided. I printed this onto paper, 28 pound paper, glued it together. So that's, a, that's the insert for here. And then I added these cute little metal corners there. What do you think? Just add a little something. And of course you can put as much stuff as you want in here. You could put photo mats here. Uh, you could put, let's see, what else was I thinking? You could put photo mats on the back of here if you wanted to. But let's see. You could put photo mats right here. Photo mats can fit on the back side there if you wanted to. So let's see. Let me just take you through. We'll just do everything together. I've already got the insert made. And so for the flap, let's just start on the flap. The flap here, I have used that, that foundry wax. I used it on the edge of the flap. So we can do that first. Or I'll, I'll get it out, but I'll show you what I what it ended up uh, printing for for this 
Let's see. Do I have it right here? I do. So this is the page that I printed out. This is from the uh, winter ornament paper collection that we're using. So this is the one that I printed out and you can just see that I took and traced the mats for each one of these on either side because I wanted to have this old paper look on one of the edges and then you can't really tell that it's ornaments. I mean you can if you know that it's ornaments but it just looks like script and different colors there and I really thought that was kind of pretty. So that's what I did with that. So I'm going to put that one aside just so I don't get myself confused. And then on the other side, for the back side here, I printed another one of the pages and I printed these onto paper. So it's another one of the pages. I just printed and traced this and this so it's continuous. So this is gonna go on the inside there to mat it. And this is just the plain, it was like scripty. It doesn't have any sort of ornaments or trees or snowman or anything like that on it. So that's going to go there, and then this part here, this is number 15 in the shades of color. So I just printed that onto just plain paper, just plain paper, and I, tra I, I, printed, I printed the shades of color on pla plain paper and then traced them out. Okay, so let's just start there. What have we got here? Oh, okay, leftover piece. So we'll mat the inside parts here in just a second, but let's do this part first. So I'm gonna need I'm gonna need this anyway. So I'm gonna grab this. And so you're supposed to shake the foundry wax. Let me scooch you in. Don't forget there's a giveaway for this album. That all you have to do is you have to be a subscriber to my channel and you need to leave a comment under all the videos in this playlist. And then we will be picking some, uh, a couple random videos and grabbing the comments from there. And then it, the two winners will receive a paper collection from 2016. So you can't get your hands on it anymore. It's a Prima and it's a full collection. And that video should be part of the playlist. Of, of what um, what's all included so I'm just taking and just getting it on my finger and just kind of it's almost like I'm scraping my finger and I'm making a mess and I don't have a paper towel scraping my finger on the edge just to get it on the edge just because I want it to look kind of um, I don't know not perfect rough so you do that and then in order to set it you have to use a heat gun so and it doesn't take very long it'll change color so it'll go from this dull color to a shiny color So now I've got the little shiny edge and I'm going to have, I'm going to actually go ahead and glue this down and then we're going to start melting the wax. Well, no, let's go ahead and mat everything and then we'll do the wax. So I'm going to use, I'm going to scoot you back a little because you know you're too close. I'm just going to use some Fabri-Tac. to glue these down. It just gives me um, wiggle room, especially when you're going inside pockets. It's very helpful to have wiggle room. So if you got any ideas of inserts for inside of these um, 
of these envelopes here, uh, leave, them, leave them down below. Leave the ideas uh, down below in a comment. That way, um, that way I can maybe, you know, use them. Use some of your ideas. Okay, so then let's mat this part. rub off any excess glue all right so I wanted to point out it might not show you clearly because of it being shiny so the this is a magnet saver right here and I had to cut some of it off because for whatever reason I, I put it where it was really up close to the edge so I just used my Tim Holtz scissors and just went in there and just kind of snipped snipped off the edge so that it wouldn't show and I think I did okay. I think it's okay. I mean, I, I'm not real happy about it being real sloppy looking right there, but I think it's okay. So I'm going to remove this tape backing off of here. So now we have that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scooch back out. I'll scooch you back in when I go to pour the wax. But I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to stick it here on my, my candle. This is a salt candle that my mom gave me years and years and years ago. But it's got a flat surface and it's perfect because I have my candles lit all the time when I'm working. Um, it's perfect for this. And I've got that. I've got these linked in my Amazon. I've got the special tea light candles. They burn forever linked in the Amazon. All the wax seal stuff's linked. In. These rose quartz are linked in the Amazon. Lots of stuff linked down there for you guys. The rose quartz comes in a set of four. So if you wanted to go in with a buddy or something and buy them, so you can each have one or two, that would be fun. Okay, I'm going to scoot you guys in so you can see a little bit better. Oh, did you hear my dog? A little bit better. So I'm going to pour. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. You really don't want it smoking. I don't know if you can see that it was smoking. You really don't want it smoking. So I'm going to pour this on here. I used three beads, which it's possible could be too much. You see how it's boiling? I don't know if yeah, you can tell. Okay, so I'm gonna put my wax seal stand. But I like it when they look all wonky. I think that is so much more realistic and much more vintage looking than if you had a perfect little wax circle. I'm not into that perfect little wax circle. <laughs> I like the wonky. The wonky to me is spot on. All right, so this is going to take a minute to cool, so I'm just going to let it sit for a second. Okay. Oh, I didn't get my H on there perfectly, but that's okay. I'm using H. You can use whatever you want. I just didn't have anything that fit the kind of winter, pastel wintery look that we got going on here, so that's why I'm using H. All right, will it come up? Yes. All right, so now we got that done. Let me move. Okay, so look at there. Perfectly imperfect. Love it. Let me scoot you back out. All right, so before we make this insert, let's, let's do these. First thing I want to do is these pieces here, they were, I just traced it onto coffee stained paper. And both pieces just traced it onto coffee stained paper and then we're going to add these little metal corners and then this piece here I think it was like this so it was a full sheet this was from the uh, winter ornament 
and it was a full sheet. This was the landscape version of this. And so I just, again, traced them side by side so it would be a continuous pattern and then inked them up. So let's first, I want to put the corners on here so that they can uh, start to dry. And the corners, we use these same corners in the front, except I'm not going to do any sort of um, treatment to them. I'm just going to leave them as they are. Um, just because why not, you know, just for the contrast. And since you get so many, how many, 48 pieces uh, of, you know, of them, you know, you got plenty, plenty to go around. So I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put one on each corner there. I think it's just a sweet little detail. I'm just using my fabric tuck. Oops. Fabri-Tac dries clear, so you don't have to worry about it oozing, oozing up through the holes. It'll be fine. Okay. So when it when I go to mat it, right, so they're both going to have the matching corner. I think it's just going to look pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for a second. Let's do the matting on these two really quick. Again, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. Okay, so that's definitely going to take a minute to dry. And then this is the only insert I've got prepped right now. But I think it's fine for right now. So when it's closed, doesn't that look neat? I just think it's so cool looking. Check it out. Right? Okay. The last thing we're going to do is the little booklet here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. And I'm going to show you. Let me move this stuff that I don't need. All the scraps left over from tracing. Um, yeah, I need that. So this is the page from the random embellishments that I have. They're linked in my collection. Um, this is the page. This is printed onto cardstock. And I think what I'm going to do first <laughs> is I'm going to cut that a piece aside. I always keep my scraps. You never know. And I'm going to attach, on the back side here, I'm just going to attach it down to some coffee stained paper. As long as I have a big enough, and I do. So, I'm going to do that first. So we can let that dry a little bit. Burnishing. All right, we're going to let that sit for a second. So then I also printed, so this is from the embellishment, uh, the embellish, the fussy cut elements out of the, the uh, magical, I'm sorry, <laughs> out of the winter ornament paper collection. And this one was actually one that I painted with you guys years from 2018 that I actually painted with you guys on, uh, on video. But what I'm going to do is I printed this out twice because I just figured I would do the same thing that I did here. So I'm going to use this piece here and I'm just going to quickly just kind of take it off of here. This is just printed onto paper. And then I'm going to use this as a guide, but you just kind of want it to fit right inside there. So for one, I know I want, and also I was, I'm kind of wiggly about, about trimming it out. It doesn't, it does not have to be a perfectly straight. 
line. Okay. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to end up cutting it just right on the outside of each one of his little arms where the ornaments are. Just like that. And then let me do a little wiggly wiggly on the bottom. Yep, pretty good. And I don't know if I saw that right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to roll the edges just a little bit. Just a little bit, just to give them a little bit of texture. Sorry about the glue on my fingers. And then I'm going to take my Distress Oxide. Come here. Oh, there's the part of the magnet that I cut off from the magnet. I had to do it for both flaps. So, it's just like, you know. Okay. Right, I'm going to ink this up. And then I also need a label. So we're, do, we're using the rectangle labels. And I'm going to use the blue one. I hope I got some in here. Yep. Is that the same size? Yeah. So I'm going to use the blue one. These are printed. I'm pretty sure this is just cardstock. So this is the medium size. There's a small, medium, large. And that is the medium size. So, this is one of my most favorite things that I've ever created. I don't know why. When it comes to embellishments, I love these rectangle labels so much. Okay. Let me ink that up. Okay, then I'm going to use a piece of packing paper. And we're going to make it look like that. So it just kind of has like layers. Can you see that? I just really liked it. So let's just glue this down and then we can go from there. Gonna tear some of these edges. Then you just want to do this, and it should just start to naturally look old and worn. So the more we mess with it, the more it'll get, you know, old and worn looking. <laughs> Matter of fact, we could go ahead and put it on here, just like that, if we wanted to. Well, maybe up a little higher. Let's just do it. Oh, I see. Maybe I didn't cut it the exact same. This one's... That's okay. It's totally fine. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Okay. So... Right there. Make sure it's straight. Okay, now we're going to let that dry. And we're going to focus on this again. So, I'm going to grab my scoreboard here. And I'm going to get a stylus that has a, a rounder. I don't know how well you can see that. It has a rounder ball on the end. Or a rounder. A bigger, a bigger, a rounder ball. It has a bigger ball in the end. <laughs> Jeez. And I'm going to 
score right down the middle here. Whoa, got off there. Right down the middle. Then I'm going to score on these marks as best I can anyway. Doesn't have to be perfect. You should be able to see, well, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There you go, the three, so kind of, sort of. Okay, the first thing is, I'm a, the first score, I'm going to fold it back on itself. Right? And then I'm going to flip it around, and then this first score on, from this side, fold it back onto itself. Oops, I feel like I might have gotten off on that. That's okay. Right, and then the middle score, I'm going to fold this whole thing in half. Just like that. I think that's good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go through all labor, all labors, all four layers. You don't have to be perfect about it. The edge of this is not perfectly straight. It's wonky. Okay. So you see we got both sides there and then now it's matted on the inside. Okay, so then I'm gonna ink this up a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, you don't have to do this step, I just think it adds, because this here is, it's from, a, it's actually my mom's, it was a binder, a school binder from, you know, a long, 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 long time ago. And even when I was in school, we had these kind of binders. I don't know what they're called, but um, it's kind of a fabric-y feel. Well, anyway, they always got real scuffed up, so, on the edges, so I wanted to do that with these just to make it look like the edges have gotten scuffed. So this is just like a nail buffer. Nothing real exciting. And I think it's a um, it's a gritty one. It's like, oh shoot, I can't remember. Does it say on here? No. But it's definitely got some teeth to it. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Ooh, made a mess. This definitely doesn't help my allergies. Okay, so then the next thing I want to do is the pages. So I put three pages in this other one. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to, this is some vintage paper that I have. Just rolled like, you know, what's that called? Oh, what was that? Was that some? Huh. That's interesting. I don't know. Is it weird? I've never seen that before. Huh. It was somebody studying a foreign language. Sorry. <laughs> I, got, I got distracted. So what I want to do is I want to tuck this in here like this. And I'm going to take a ruler. And I'm just going to rip this off. like that then I have um, I have this sheet from this booklet since there's only three pages in here and each page makes you know two sheets so I have this one as well so I'm just gonna stick this one in here and I'm gonna stick this one in here back there like that so now there's three that in there okay 
Now before I do anything, anything else, I'm going to take and use my crocodile and I'm going to use the 1 8 is it the 1 8 inch hole? Yeah, 1 8 and I'm going to go through each one of those that look like a metal brad, which you could use brads if you wanted to. So I got that. Then I'm going to use my baker's twine and a big large needle and I'm going to thread this I'm going to sew it on here just a little bit different than I usually do so I'm just going to show you it's just I wanted it to end up in a certain spot and you'll see what I'm talking about well this baker's twine is so thick So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go down at the top hole, come up through the middle, go down at the bottom hole. I may not have enough. I may not have given myself enough. Go back up to the middle. I did. And then we're going to tie it. We're going to tie it up here. First I need to make sure it's a little snug. I was going to do a bow up here, but these, this, this stuff here is so, so thick. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to actually do a good bow. I'm just going to twirl it around there. Oops. Just the, the stragglers. I'm just going to twirl it around. Oh, oh, I cut my finger. Dang it. Snip the top of my finger. I might have to get a band aid. We'll see. Okay. Okay. So now I'm scared to touch anything. So I think what I'll do is I will tear these top and bottom pieces off. Yep, we gotta be careful with scissors, you guys. Gotta be careful. And then I may just cut these off because I don't want to try to tear that. All right, so it looks pretty good, yeah. These are my skin. And then this goes here. And then all done. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're going to try this type of little booklet insert. I think it turned out super cute. And make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and all that stuff. Oh, that's so cute. I didn't put anything on the back, but again, you could put, you could put uh, photo mats. I'm just trying to touch anything with my finger. So, yeah, super cute. Okay, I'm going to try to be careful. I love it. I think it turned out really awesome. Even though those two booklet inserts are facing the exact same way and these are facing the opposite way. I think it's okay. What do you guys think? All right, let me know what you think, uh, what your favorite part is about this uh, video. And thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.